as we start uh, the new year 2020, uh, it's a good time to revisit our topic about, you know, what's going to happen between banks and fintechs. A recent uh, report by CB Insights uh, stated that there has been 186% jump in the investments made by banks and fintechs. Uh, so to today we are going to talk about, you know, whether it's better for banks to acquire fintechs or partner more with them. Big question on everyone's mind this year is, are, as banks are investing more in the fintech space, which avenue is going to be more profitable for them, to acquire or to partner? So as we have seen, you know, there have not been many acquisitions by banks or fintechs till now. There have been a lot of investments that banks have made uh, in the fintech space, but they haven't really acquired a lot of fintechs. So I think 2020 will be a very interesting year because what is happening is that banks are under a lot of pressure because of lower interest rates and NIMS have really got squeezed. They're under tremendous amount of pressure to cut cost and at the same point of time to start growing the business. So in my view, there will be more acquisitions this year than what we have seen in the last four or five years. And at the same point of time, I still see that uh, still banks will be more inclined even right now to invest in fintechs than acquiring fintechs, you know, because they're still trying to understand the space and also how the fintechs really work. What would you say is the difference when it comes to a bank's strategy in choosing to acquire, invest, or partner with a fintech company yeah so you know a lot of banks the way that you know they have done their acquisitions in the past they've been more comfortable in acquiring other banks or so obviously it's not in their comfort zone unlike the technology companies who are big acquirers so for them acquiring a fintech becomes a lot bigger learning curve that's why we have seen more either partnerships or investments and and in my view a lot of them think that you know putting some amount of money in a larger funding round in a fintech is a great way to learn uh, I'm not seeing a lot of success with that model and partnerships is also you know where it's still a mixed bag uh, because well, banks realize the need for more partnerships they also have a lot of still the compliance and regulatory issues that they need to take care of the larger the institution the more complex it is what's the current state of affairs with banks acquiring fintechs by the different types of fintech that are out there what what we have typically seen is that banks have uh, made acquisitions or investments mostly on the payment side, followed by capital markets and, and data analytics, because that's what they totally lack. On the lending side, they have done more partnerships or they're trying to figure out more partnerships. So I think that's where it also gets starting to get differentiated between where they will invest, what they will acquire, and where they will partner. So strategically, what argues in favor of a partnership with a fintech versus doing your own in-house IT? So I think for banks also, it's a it's a huge cultural change that they have to undergo, where they will have to learn how to partner, collaborate, and work in shared ecosystems. They think everything is proprietary or should be proprietary to them, and that's not the way it can, it can work any longer. Are banks today thinking of themselves more in the mold of tech companies that are acquiring all the time? Is that why acquisitions are up? over the last year? So large banks are thinking more and more as tech companies or they're at least trying to you know, position themselves like that. And I think they're hiring a lot of coders, a lot of technology folks. I think uh, again, the challenge is not hiring. The challenge is that, are you hiring the right people? Are you able to retain the best people? Are you able to create a culture of innovation and openness and speed? You know, which banks traditionally have lacked, you know, doing that. If you're not a top 25 or top 50, I think the only option is for you is to partner. You know, you can invest some money in some of these startups and all that, but I think that's 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 where it's all about. You know, you need to build a very robust partnership play and very like open-minded, very transparent and, you know, and like a mutually beneficial kind of relationship and also create an ecosystem that why more fintech should work with you. My take is that, you know, uh, in 2020, you know, banks and fintechs should partner more closely while media wants to make a lot of noise about banks trying to buy or wanting to buy fintechs. For most of the banks, it's a better strategy just to partner, invest, co-learn and co-work with, uh, you know, fintechs in different spaces. And, and, and as the year progresses, 2020 and beyond, it will be very interesting for them to learn and actually, you know, co-join with them. Thank you.